Hello, my name is Mark, and I thank you so much for coming by today. For my work, I use all kinds of sketchbooks, journals, and notebooks. And for me, I don't discriminate against one book or another, as I enjoy each one that I have. But when it comes to my finished work, or which medium I'm going to use in a book, I choose my books carefully to minimize frustration and maximize enjoyment. One of the brands I've used for years is this one right here which you may or may not have seen before, but they've been around for a long, long time. So today I wanted to share my experience with this brand and the quality of their books, which I personally find to be excellent. But where to begin? Well, when you first open their book, you're gonna find this little accordion pamphlet that they tuck inside along with a thank you card. I really like this little pamphlet because it gives a little history of the company, it shows what kind of books they offer and the different pages that you can get with these books. They have blank pages like this sketchbook, or you can get uh, ruled pages, uh, grid-like squared pages, or dotted pages for journaling. I use this mostly for sketching, but I have used them for keeping notes in the past. Mostly I use it for sketching nowadays, though. What I really love about this book is, number one, the construction of the book is fantastic from this outside cover, which has a, a faux leathery feel to it. Uh, not too soft, it's a hardcover book, but it has that nice cover on it and it gives it the feel of something a little more elegant other than just, you know, your plain old paper cover. So right off the bat, the cover is appealing to me. When I open the back side of the book, it's sort of a standard commonplace thing to find now, which is these uh, little pop out kind of pockets that they put in the back of sketchbooks now. I don't really use them for much anymore. I mean, when I first started using these kind of sketchbooks, I would tuck in reference photos and all kinds of things in there, but I really don't use them that much. So they're a nice little kind of benefit to the book, but uh, it's not necessary. What they also include is a couple of samples. Here's some labels that you can use within the book. And if you want to order more, I guess you can order more. And here's a couple of samples of the paper. Here's that grid or squared page that I was saying. And they also have the ruled kind. They also have a dotted page as well. Well, I love these books. And for me, they work like any other sketchbook. Nowadays, you can find most sketchbooks with this sort of elastic binding that you can wrap around to keep the book closed. So that's pretty standard for most sketchbooks nowadays. What I also love about this sketchbook too is the fact that the pages come right outside to the edge of the hard cover. And that's a benefit for me because you're getting a, a little bit more paper. You're getting to the edge of the book. And I find that to be appealing. Most sketchbooks that you buy nowadays or journal books have these ribbons in them to keep your place. Honestly, I don't use these very often, so uh, I could clip these off and I'd be okay. I leave them on, but uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, right on the inside, the inside cover page is really nice. That red color is just a really nice accent to the tan outer cover. And uh, when you get inside to the pages, you can feel that the pages are a little bit, um, probably about 50 to 60 pounds. Uh, fairly thin you can see through to the table of contents on the other side so you know right away you're getting a fairly thin paper I love the feel of this paper it's smooth but it has a very very slight tooth to it so you know it's going to be great for things like ballpoint pen and pencil so in this test as you watch along uh, you can see that I'm going to test a whole bunch of different kinds of mediums from ballpoint pen I'll do a pencil test I'll also do sharpies and I'll do uh, some colored pens like the uh, Statler fine liner pens. I'll do pit pens. I'll do watercolor. <laughs> I'll do micron pens and uh, colored pencil and even gel pens. So there's a lot to, to go into this because one of the things I want to talk about uh, while I have some time is the name of the product. And that has caused a lot of confusion for people over the years. I know it caused confusion for me when I first laid eyes on this product. I remember going into a Barnes and Noble and they were selling these sketchbooks and I saw the name and I was like, what is that name? It's a Leica term, it's Leuk term. What is the name of that book? I could not figure it out. And what's with this 1917 business? Uh, so, <laughs> so I did my research and uh, did my, my due diligence here to understand and learn more about this company. Well, 
here's the brief history that I understand and what I've figured out is that in 1917, the country of Germany was embroiled in World War I, and they focused most of their resources on military and weapons development and so forth like that. It was a poor country, and most businesses weren't doing too well. This company, they made little coin and stamp holders, and that was their big business. And it was a good business because they were the only ones making these products. Well, that success allowed them to get into the stationary line and create things like little, small, personal notebooks. And those became so popular because the quality was excellent, they were versatile, and they came in different sizes. Now, the size that I'm using here is about eight by five and a half, I believe. And so I really like this size. It works perfectly well for me. And um, their notebooks have been adopted for use in all walks of life, from business to home use to schools, churches, and even the military. Now, this company was founded in Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany, which is basically it's located in the northern coast of Germany. And that's where the name of the company comes from uh, or comes in anyway, because it's at the northern part of the coast. You might find something unique there. And that's what I'm going to get into here. And that is the name of the company. Now, the spelling of the company's name and its pronunciation, like I said, have created confusion for a lot of people, including myself. And there's all kinds, you'll hear all kinds of pronunciations for it. But the pronunciation is actually Leuchtturm. Uh, if you have a thick German accent, it's Leuchtturm. Now, what the name literally means is Leucht, which is German for light, and Term, which is for tower. So it's a light tower, or as we know it, a lighthouse. And the idea probably came from uh, a lighthouse that is a beacon for ships seeking safe passage to the harbor at night. And I love the fact that this company chose to embrace that idea and the fact that they were the company was founded in 1917. So they, they are basically a lighthouse from 1917. And they have become, I guess, metaphorically a beacon for users to find safe passage in organizing and harboring their ideas tasks, thoughts, and plans, uh, or at least that's my ro romantic interpretation. I love the idea that they came up with this name and they have been so successful with their product line and uh, we get to use their, their products that have been around for like 90 something years. So I, I just think it's amazing. And so as a disclaimer, I have to say, I have no affiliation with Leuchtturm, the company, and I receive no compensation from them or anything. I buy these books myself, and I just want to share the review with anybody who's interested, uh, just because that's what I do. <laughs> so I don't get paid for this. This is just, I bought the book and I really like it, so I thought I'd share it with you. But anyway, as you can see from this test, I did all the different mediums here, and you can see that things like the ballpoint pen doesn't show up through it pencil doesn't show up through to the other side but the micron pen does the sharpie obviously bleeds right through and uh, the pit pens and the statler fine liners they don't do it too much but i also did a dip pen which you can see bled right through to the next page over so that's not a good use for this uh, kind of a book for me colored pencil regular graphite pencil ballpoint pen and even the uh, micron pens are okay what I wanted to see is how gel pen works with these because I think I would use gel pen a lot, especially if I'm just out and about and the quickest thing I have is a gel pen. So I'm using a 0.07, which is a thicker line and a 0.05 or an 03, I'm not sure, uh, which is a thinner line and you can see that here. And as you would expect, it does bleed through. Uh, you have to draw really quick lines for it not to bleed through. The slower you go, like where I wrote test page, uh, it bleeds right through. So you can see if I were to draw with a gel pen and kind of ink in a heavy area, it would definitely bleed through. But for my uses and for the way I like to use uh, a sketchbook like this, it's not ideal for wet mediums like watercolor or something like that, but it's a lot of fun to have these. They're within a reasonable price point and I really enjoy them. I can get these for about 15 to $20, depends where you shop. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was enjoyable, and if it was, please subscribe. I'll bring you more content like this in the future. I've got more stuff coming up. Have a great weekend and a great week ahead, and thank you so much, and as always, God bless.